Mm. <laughs> Ice tea. Let me kick my credentials. A young player bred in South Central LA. Home of the body bag. You want to die? Wear the wrong color rag. I used to walk in the stores and yell, lay down. You sent your inch, AK, spray down. But I was looking. Listen, y'all. I know a little bit something about that. <laughs> Who was that? Ice-T, one of my favorite favorite rappers. Old school, like me. Okay, uh, I am from the original era of hip-hop. But, uh, you know, I wanted to talk about something today. Uh, and it was inspired, actually, by a review of the uh, 5150 show. Okay? Uh, Brother Rizza Islam... Uh, Darlene Ortiz and Corey Holcomb, of course, and um, what's the other Marcus? You know Marcus. Um, I think they had a relatively uh, informative program this week. Uh, talked about a lot of things, and uh, some of the things I can't repeat to a certain amount of time go past. So, in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to uh, all my new subscribers. Let me give a shout out to Yanni, Tommy, uh, D, and also Jake, Paul. I like to thank y'all for um, you know commenting on uh, you know on the on the uh, commentary that I made as well. So if I missed anybody. Let me be remiss because y'all know how that would. <laughs> sometimes you hit it and sometimes you don't. But um, I thought it was real important that um, we talk about some of the history. History, history, history of our responsibility as, as people. You know, a lot of times it's easier to blame. And of course, because there's such a hidden hand in all of the things that have happened to us throughout our sojourner here in America, uh, that I would be remiss to not pretend or to pretend as if the, the, the major hidden hand, the puppet master, uh, if I was to exonerate him, okay? But even with that being said, I cannot, and I think it's real important that we as individuals, because we individuals first, begin to understand like what Brother Michael said when he said, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Remember that one? Okay, because if you don't start with your individual self, what has happened with your responsibility individually? How have you dropped the ball individually? Then you can't never make it to the next level. It's just that simple. And I'm going to give you an example, you know, and I agree with everything Brother Is uh, Rizza was saying in terms of who's the hidden hand, the puppet master involved in all of our uh, misfortune, all of our oppression. Um, that goes without saying. However, we need to understand also there was a time when we were much more responsible for ourselves and we were proud, a proud people. We were ornate, proud people. And somehow we cannot blame white folk for us dropping that ball. Sometimes we make white people just way, 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 way too powerful. And when we do that, we take the power away from ourselves. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Yeah, there was a time when the welfare department, because I remember my aunt was on welfare, I guess, because she used to have to hide stuff. So that is a truth postulate, that if you were receiving any kind of aid, from uh, the state, then they would take your 
um, benefits away. You cannot have a man in your house uh, because things will change. However, here's the other side of coin to that that y'all don't want to deal with. Um, it used to also be a, a law that you couldn't even make a complaint against the police unless you own the house, unless you own property. You couldn't make a complaint against a white person unless you were a property owner, let alone go down there and have any other kind of complaint. So there were a lot of families, including my own. So I'm going to start in my own family. My family was never receiving any kind of aid from the state. My father was in the house and he took care of his children and he took care of his wife. Okay? So no uh, uh, um, welfare worker came in and opened up our closet. They didn't have ownership of our home that way. In fact, just me um, knowing that that existed, I can't deny that it's the, not the truth. But what happened to the families that said, oh, no, 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 no. Those of us who remember uh, being raised or have had the experience, uh, because we one thing we cannot deny as black people is we've had leadership. From Noble Du Ali, from Marcus Garvey, from, I mean... <laughs> Just let's go. Let's just from Malcolm X to we can go on and on and on and on and on. Elijah Muhammad. Now, whether we wanted to take tidbits from what their teachings were or whether we wanted to reject them all together, it don't matter. Any family that I grew up that was in the nation of Islam, didn't nobody come in and kick nobody's doors in to see if they had a toaster in the oven? I mean, uh, or in here in the closet, because first of all, if you couldn't afford no wife, you wasn't gonna have no wife. And if you didn't have a, a husband, you wasn't gonna have no house full of children. If there was some kind of rules and standard that you had to go by. Now, if you was out here just living willy nilly, then that's one of the consequences for that lifestyle. Having white them people get into your business. Um, I remember, in fact, the police coming to my home at when we were children because we were already taught to hit the door. My father used to um, uh, hit the floor. My father used to do an undercover um, newspaper, and I, uh, so I was brought up learning when the police came or whatever high or get on the floor um, because I, and I thought that was part of everybody's existence. That's number one. I can remember the police coming into my home and my father running, uh, uh, meeting him at the door in the dark, in the hallway because they try to come into our house and him pull it, having them uh, move off our property. And when I think about that now, I'm like, oh, my God, they would have blew my dad away. But my father was a man. And the fact of the matter is, I thought all men operated that way. They were going, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait. And they were all tumbling down the stairs on each other. It was like two cops coming into my house in the middle of the night. And they were met with my father. Now. My father was never a service person. I have uncles who uh, was brought up different and they went to their respective, um, you know, branch of the services, whether it was the army, Navy, uh, Marine Corps, whatever. My father always believed the army was no uh, place for a black man. He had no rights here. And he's certainly not going to go across the water and fight an uh, uh, enemy who had never called him a nigga, who was closer to them than the, uh, their oppressor. So I always, none of my brothers fought in any kind of service, which helped breed the independence that I'm talking about. See, when you begin to lose your independence, and you begin to follow the white man's recipe 
wholeheartedly, then that's the, some, some of this is the result of that. And I know we don't want to admit it, but we took his blueprint and we made that work for our family as opposed to continuing to have our families work the way it was working, independent of what the white man thought we should be. Because look at the nation of Islam right now. That's something, the tradition that's been carried on forever. I ain't see nobody, um, uh, uh, like I said, hiding from the man. Keep away from me, Mr. Welfare. I, 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 I mean, come on. That was not something that we experienced in our families. Black men were head of their household. Okay, so you want to know who dropped the ball? Whoa. That's when we got to start doing some self-inventory. Just like I know it wasn't all about um, uh, uh, black men being in jail. I actually literally remember young men in my neighborhood being plucked out when the Vietnam War was here. My um, my my neighbors, our friends. Mm, I remember Howard and, and Nathaniel and some of these guys, they never returned. They, they, they were young men. And it's really important that y'all understand that because when I get to focusing on it, I get real sad. I said, so, you know, you always hear the, the dominant society talking about, oh, the man is not in the home. And I, look how many poor black men were sent over to Vietnam. Young 18-year-olds, because back then it was a draft. You didn't get the option to volunteer whether you were going to the service or not. Most of the young men were afraid when they got 16 because they didn't want to be drafted in this damn white man's war. Period. I remember um, the guys, like I said, Tommy and Blodgett and all these guys that they were plucked away from our neighborhoods. Some of them never to be seen again. You know, and then some of them, when they came back, they might not have been right. That was a big dynamic happening in the community as well. Okay. But what I never want to lose sight of is my neighbor, Sylvia. Okay. And I talk about her all the time because her memories just flood my mind. Sylvia Bell and her brother was killed by Milwaukee Police Department. 30 years later, they found out because they tried to put the, a knife. They put the knife in his right hand, but he was left handed. And Sylvia and I mean, she had she was the only girl at like out of what, 17, 18 uh, uh, siblings. And she ended up getting all her, you know, family members up from Louisiana, up um, from the south to Milwaukee. <coughs> she had a son named Douglas. <coughs> and what I remember um, is she was independent. She owned her home. Her and uh, with the uh, famous disc jockey O.C. White, and it was because of that that she could complain against the Milwaukee Police Department, just like my parents. So every black person that had an independent spirit and an um, and uh, um, unoppressed a spirit wasn't necessarily a member of the Nation of Islam, so I don't want y'all to think that. There were actual black people that didn't want to drop the ball because they knew how important it was to be a family. We've lost that, y'all. We can't blame nobody for that. We can't blame um, a, a situation where we've allowed the project mentality to have taken over our families to a degree where we proud now. We living underneath out the mud and, and we proud of it. We allow that, uh, in other words, oh yeah, we hard. Oh yeah, we this. 
Yeah, most of us got what we got out the mud. Ain't no big deal, but you ain't got to stay in the mud. The fact of the matter is, you should want to overcome that circumstance. It's, it was never, never, never an option for Sylvia not to raise her siblings. And when she thought that they were facing oppression in Louisiana, never thought that when she got up here, her baby brother Daniel would get killed by the police. And that took a toll on her. You know, I and I, 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 I thought about that when... I heard somebody say, I don't know which one was it, Riza Islam or was it Corey, when they were talking about um, uncles and some of the uh, women who, um, because you know, Corey always want to come from a place where it seems like he's blaming women. Okay, so in my, in my heart, it's like, dude, okay, I already know the dynamic. But I do know this. A lot of young women can't talk to their uncle because their uncles are, are molesters. Their uncles don't have any foundation. Their uncles don't have any... They uh, get it out the mud. They live out the mud. So it's nothing for them to... And they have no standards. So what they do is they prey on their niece. Okay? There's a lot of that going on in our community. We don't want to address it. Because it's easier to point fingers at each other. Okay? But Elijah Muhammad said, <laughs> he used to always say, if you are looking at a no good woman, I mean no good woman. Now a lot of y'all might not like this, but I'm going to say it anyway. She's been made no good by no good man. Okay, women are receptors. Okay, they receive. That's why you got the female and the male plug, right? They receive the currency. They receive the energy. So if 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 your conduit is in the right direction and leading in the right direction, this has nothing to do with sexuality. It has to do with science. That means the way, by virtue of the way she's wired, you will plug in and watch your universe expand. But if you breathe in dead man's bones and you full of garbage and soy, as, as y'all talked about, then what you're going to have is a very, very weak uh, current. Okay, that's, that's, that's coming from the receptor. You, from the male receptor, you got a real, real weak problem now. So now white men can come in and take get take a hold of your family. Um, It's like, almost like what Dr. King said, can't nobody ride your back unless your back is bent. And we have to understand that. While we know that there is a master uh, hand in all that is going wrong in terms of oppression, we cannot we cannot negate the fact that we dropped the ball. And until we pick the ball back up and step into our rightful place the way we supposed to, there's no way in the world we can even fight this enemy. We can't. We don't have enough oomph. Now think about it. We got to get back to loving our families. Not uh, making children like you pissing upside of wa uh, water holes. I mean, you're going up to a fire hydrant and every, like, male dog, every fire hydrant you see, you lift your leg up and piss on it. No responsibility to what you are uh, injecting. It's got nothing to do with if you think you're going to die, you decide, I want to have a thousand kids. It's got nothing to do with that. That's all irresponsibility. I'm talking about getting back to a family and a family plan that I, I was once a part of. And as black people, we were once a part of. Now, y'all want to continue to keep blaming a white man for every damn thing that's wrong with us? We ain't never going to get right. 
But once we decided that we're going to stand up, sweep around our own front door, individually, start right there. Because can't nobody ride your back again, like Dr. King said, unless it's been. And once you individually decide to take your family back, can't no white social worker come in and see to see whose uh, shoes is under your bed because there would be no need for her services, would it? If you had a family, if you had a responsible uh, 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 fathers that were responsible for their children and mothers who were responsible for the life that they bring in the world, what need would you have of them? We didn't have to have them before. In fact, all that stuff wasn't created for us. It was created for them. When the men went off, they men went off to World War II. Well, no welfare. When my mom and them was coming up and you got, if a girl got pregnant, there's no welfare. When I go over to the Bahamas, I remember asking one of the guys, I was like, what happened when the girl get pregnant? He looked at me like, you take care of it. There are no food stamps. See, so we are accustomed to living a way um, that, and, I, and I'm not judging nobody for this. What I'm saying is, look at the situation, look at the circumstance, and then see how we've evolved to this. Even if you own up, now you got a responsibility to learn how to grow your own, don't you? You are the master agriculturist of the earth, and now you can't even grow a damn pickle. You can't even grow a, 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 a tomato. That's got nothing to do with white people. It's got something to do with us. And we got to go back to what we know, people. And that's what I pray. That we get back to what we know. Now, I know a lot of y'all going to be mad about this one, but I can't, I can't worry about that. Just think about what I'm saying. And I'm going to see you in the next video. So if you like what you hear, please subscribe and please share the video. And I'll see you in the next one.